What is up guys? It's your boy Rick. Hasn't left the dungeon in three days. Cacus. And today we are going to be showcasing how to farm the absolute crap out of the duality dungeon added to Destiny 2 within Season of the Haunted Season 17 so you guys can get that sweet new dungeon loot. Seriously, the weapons are absolutely cracked and have some super unique roles. And so, let's get started. Now we are going to be farming the boss fight. You can get any piece of loot from this fight. So yes, you do often get armor, but you're guaranteed two dungeon drops every single run, and therefore things generally equal out, and this is still a pretty amazing farm for those new dungeon weapons. So obviously get that final boss checkpoint, um, either out on an LFG, or if you have to make it all the way from the start to the final boss, guys make sure to check out my complete dungeon guide linked up above, every single mechanic of every single encounter, jumping puzzles, everything you need. Now, once you do have that boss checkpoint, you know, on another character so you can keep loading into that same boss every single time, we're going to talk about the loadouts you need to one phase this boss. That is the key. If you can get to a damage phase as fast as possible, we're going to talk about that too, and then one phase the boss, you get in and out pretty darn fast, and those double dungeon rewards really add up. So, I want to mention right off the bat that you can use uh, the Blade Barrage Gunslinger Hunter combined with the knock them down aspect to make your super do more damage and then you're combining that with the star eater scales so that collecting orbs give you an escalating bonus to your super damage. So if you have all three hunters and you take the time to set this up, everyone needs a ton of orbs, then you can potentially absolutely crank the boss almost instantly. However, what I'm going to recommend is some more general methods that are going to work regardless of your team composition and some builds that are going to be great for getting to the boss damage phase because I know that there's a ton of ads here and some of you guys may struggle with that part. This is going to make it as consistent and easy as possible for the most number of players out there. So my main build was Titan because 100 resilience on a titan is absolutely busted right now just incredible for staying alive now i am running a sentinel with ward of dawn in lieu of a high damage super if you really want to be thunder crush plus cuirass of the falling star you can but void is going to be so much better for dealing with those ads speaking of which i've switched to scatter grenade over vortex grenade because vortex got unintentionally nerfed scatter is incredible controlled demolition again for that ad clearing and that healing and then bastion is just so darn good now my fragments i do have an echo of undermining this is very important if someone is void they should probably be running this so your grenades apply a weakened effect that's going to be very helpful uh, for the boss and then then we've got uh, Echo of Leeching for health regen and Echo of Instability, guys. This gives uh, your weapon volatile rounds after getting a grenade kill. Incredibly, incredibly good. Arguably the best Void Fragment right now because the seasonal mod that gave volatile rounds is out of the game right now. So this is just so darn good. Now our main boss DPS is going to be from Swords. I'm using the Fallen Guillotine here, the classic role of Relentless Strikes plus Whirlwind Blade. I know a lot of you guys out there have Fallen Guillotines. It was in the world loot pool for the longest time, and you can absolutely, even though this thing is old, you can one-phase the boss no problem with this thing. That's mainly because I am using Font of Might. So when I pick up that Void Elemental Well, my Guillotine gets 25% more damage, and it's really not that hard to produce and then pick up wells even in the boss fight but that also means if i was running a sunbreaker which is really good i mean soul invictus giving you constant sunspots like you're almost impossible to kill not to mention gaining radiance for a powered melee oh and you have throwing hammers that you can get back and use over and over again that's going to be great but again i would recommend running font of might and therefore run the lament if you're running that subclass because this is solar and this is another fantastic sword that you can absolutely use to one phase this boss really any good sword will be able to get the one phase here 
Now, as for my other weapons here, Funnel Web with those Volatile Rounds, you know, Subsistence, Adrenaline Junkie, just incredible. And then also the Wither Horde. Not only is this amazing for ad clearing, and you're gonna be using it a lot for that, but also, if I'm DPSing with a sword and I get a Wither Horde shot uh, to start and then go to town with my sword, that's just more overall DPS because it's damaging over time in the background. Now, as for mods I would recommend using, guys, Lucian Blade is a fantastic one. If you do have this, it's going to give you a sword damage boost if you're charged with light and then, you know, just throw on an elemental charge and you're good to go for getting charged with light. Now, importantly, if you're using something like well, or but even bubble, which I am using, you can make an argument maybe not to use this because, you know, it doesn't stack with stuff like well, but those aren't going to last for every single part of the boss damage phase, as you'll see. Uh, so often just Lucian Blade even being active for one damage phase and being relevant for one part of the damage phase is going to give you a substantial amount of extra damage. And my exotic is just the heart of inmost light. This thing is cracked beyond belief, especially if you're running 100 resilience to get your class ability all the time. And moving on to the other classes, if you are running a hunter, again, you can absolutely go the blade barrage route, but if you find yourself dying a lot, then I would recommend switching to Void and specifically going with the Morbius Quiver to do three more billion damage. Um, this was incredible. Not only does it do a ton of damage, but that debuff, that weaken effect, it provides, like, you're going to see from the background gameplay, in the damage phase where our Night Stalker uses their quiver, we can sometimes do, like, almost half of the boss's health just in that one little part of the phase. So, incredible there. You can combine that with Orpheus Rig for a whole extra shot to do even more damage. And then... The other stuff I showed in the Titan, that, that all applies, right? A great sword for DPS, you know, a great SMG, and a grenade launcher for ad clearing. Now, as for the Warlock, you can either run Cataclysm, which our Warlock was. Uh, you get those incredibly powerful Void Grenades. They can apply a debuff. You know, once you use the Tether and everything on that one part of the damage phase, that's great. But then the boss just moves on. So you need to have something else that's going to apply another debuff for the next part of that boss phase. And then something else for the third part, right? So having something like Child of the Old Gods and a Weakened Grenade, like that's gonna be so darn good, making sure to always have something that's applying some sort of debuff here. Not to mention, again, Cataclysm does a pretty darn decent amount of damage. Or you can by all means run Dawnblade and Well of Radiance. Again, you're really gonna only have this active for one third of the final boss fight, but if you can do a ton of damage in that third, you've achieved what you're setting out to do, absolutely. All right, but moving on from there, let's talk about some tips for the actual encounter. The first section is, as I talked about earlier, just a ton of ad clearing. So those volatile rounds, you know, grenades, grenade launchers, this is where they really become incredibly useful. Like my Wither Horde killed so many ads when farming this final boss CP. So you really need to make sure you are on top of those ads even something like a blinding grenade and when you teleport in, blinding the Colossus immediately so you can complete your objective in relative safety, that is so darn good. I will say, however, if you are running vault rounds, be careful about killing enemies right on the bell. The vault rounds can explode and teleport you back and kill you, so just be aware of that. Now, something you're gonna see our hunter do that was incredibly helpful is give the group invisibility as soon as you teleport back from the nightmare dimension. So this means that you can plant your standard in pretty much complete safety when usually you're trying to plant it and a million ads are shooting at you at once. So that is really a good idea. Now, a couple of tips for the boss DPS phase. So, number one, you can bait a ton of stomps from this boss. Like, if you're standing next to her, you can delay the crap out of her making it to that bell so your teammates can get into position. So, if your teammates are lacking behind, they got confused, they went to the wrong bell, run in front of the boss, like, melee her a few times, and really you can delay the crap out of her to let your teammate get in position. Now, another thing is that during this boss phase, you're gonna have red border snipers spawn up in the corridors, where normally uh, during the first part, they're the yellow guys that drop the standards and you don't wanna kill the wrong ones. For the boss phase, it is absolutely worth 
running to the bell early, making sure those uh, bell keepers are dead, and then turn on those snipers. Like, if you can kill them before the boss makes it there, and again, like, one person baiting the stomp, the other two people clearing out those snipers, that is gonna make your life a lot easier because I know that you can absolutely get overwhelmed by those snipers and die in the middle of swinging your sword at the boss. So if you don't have time to do that, make sure someone puts down a healing rift or heck, even a bastion shield can really help in those scenarios. And another thing guys, if you do go through all three bells and the boss just has a sliver of health, don't give up. You are still gonna be able to do damage, even if it's quite a bit less, uh, during this part. So as you can see, you are actually able to finish off the boss if she is low enough. So again, stand next to her to bait out all of those stomps and she will delay going away and ending the damage phase. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis, that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.